So dear friends in Christ, we welcome you to uh, this evening's catechesis. It's going to be one that's going to be interactive, one that is supposed to be um, educative, and I know it's going to be. I mean, with Father Hilary here with me, I know we are going to enjoy this evening's catechesis. Father Hilary is camera shy, and you have to know that. <laughs> Father Hilary is camera shy, but of course, he, he has a lot of wisdom we can tap into. But well, I try to help him overcome uh, the shyness of the cameras. Father is too shy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, this is Father Hilary Agbadwasi, the priest in charge of St. Bakita Catholic Church, Lashibi Community 20, and is in residence at Corpus Christi Catholic Church. And of course, I'm Father January, the assistant priest of Corpus Christi Catholic Church. So this evening, we are going to talk about empowering the domestic church. This topic has become very, very important and necessary for us because now things have changed. Things have changed because of the crisis we find ourselves in. We are used to coming to gather in church, to sing praises, to jump, to dance, and all that. Now things have changed. Most of us are at home and are viewing masses online and other programs online. And this is what we are going to talk about. The domestic church, empowering the domestic church. Now the power is in your hands, the domestic church. Father, I'm sure the, our listeners out there are passionate want to know what you mean by the domestic church in, in, in brief. Well, so there's a second Vatican Council that talks about the domestic church and says that the family is so to say the domestic church in the document Lumen Gentium chapter 11, I know, um, point 11, or number 11, I should say. And he talks about the domestic church, not because of the times we are in. In fact, the family has been domestic church for a long time. Mm -hmm. If you go as far as to the Old Testament, and you talk about, for instance, the first Passover, you know that the sacrifice was made in the homes. Yeah. They were supposed to celebrate it as homes. So there in the home, there was not the temple, but there was the family head, for instance, and all the members of the family who were supposed to offer that sacrifice. So there, there was, so to, say, so to say, a sacrifice being offered in the home. And so the home had turned into a sort of a church. And, and the sacrifice was made so that they said that if the home was too small, they could join another home. So already, there were semblances of getting in touch with God in homes, right from the Old Testament. Now we know that in the New Testament, a lot of the times they had to hide in homes to, to celebrate. Sometimes they came together in homes, yeah. but in other homes too, people were trained and trained well. And, and Paul will be saying something to Timothy, and will be talking about how Lois, the grandmother, and then the mother have shaped yeah. him up. So when we're talking about the domestic church, we are talking about people having an experience of God, not only in the four walls of the church, but in fact, even beginning from home, where they are taught about God, they have an experience with God, and then they carry it into the church. So all we are saying when we talk about the domestic church is leading the whole family to have an experience with God, leading the children, the parents to have an experience with God, but not in the four walls of the church, but in, 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 in our homes. And basically, that is what we are talking about. Okay. So, Father, if you want to look at the, um, the domestic, we have the domestic church, and then the, the we say the bigger church. So which one which one came first? The domestic church or the bigger church? If you ask me the domestic church. The domestic church. Yes. And in our faith, most of us pick up the faith right from the home. Yeah. Most of us. Most of us yeah, right from the home. So and you see also that it is one thing bringing a person to a church, but it is another thing keeping the person in the church. Right. And for keeping the person in the church, the family has a great role to play. That's why I'm saying this is not because of these times. But somebody will say that uh, what is happening is functional in yeah. a certain way, that there is something good coming out of it. Because now we are being called to build up our personal, individual spirituality, but also build up the spirituality of the family. So the family should see themselves as together in their search of God. 
Joshua will say, as for me and my family, yeah. we shall serve the Lord. So that if the whole of the world, if the whole of Israel was not going to serve the Lord, Joshua that was speaking right. on behalf of his family as, so to say, the priest of his home. Okay. That me and my family, there we have chosen the Lord. Uh, in effect, you will say he was choosing on behalf of his family. Okay. Uh, but he knows what he has done with his home. That is why he's able to say that. Okay. So if you ask me, the domestic church comes before the, 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 the larger church in the sense that, in fact, it is the domestic church that feeds the larger church. Mm -hmm. If in our domestic churches there is problem, there is no search for God, there is no desire for God, you can imagine that it's going to have an effect on the, on the bigger church. So we have to concentrate, and maybe this is a return to what is some of the things that are essential. We should gather together as a family, build up our spirituality in the home, and then translate it into the bigger church. When we watch, especially on Sunday, um, it was difficult for some people to, to stay at home and if you watch masses online, you know, people are used to the assembly, the gathering, you know, going to meet a bigger church, so to speak, or the church community to have mass. So some even left their families at home and rushed to the church premises where even we're not to gather for any social gathering, you know, or religious gathering. Some left their families and came to the compound. Ah, why no mass? Okay, so today what we want to look at is empowering the domestic church, let the domestic church know that even if the bigger gathering is not there, the, the, the foundation of the bigger church is the church at home. Mm, mm, mm. So now, what would be the responsibility of the family members? Do they have any responsibilities anyway? Yes, so, um, there's, a okay. there's a lot we can do. There's a lot we can do. So let's start with the father. What, what responsibility would the father have, the mother or the children, in building up this um, uh, I, I, I can think of the father as being the one who calls everybody to the church. If you, if you ask me, the father is like the priest in the house. The father is like the priest of the house. Uh, the father is the priest in the yeah. house. Maybe the parish priest in the you house. You have to get them castles. <laughs> <laughs> the father is the parish priest in the house. Okay. The mother is the assistant priest in the house. <laughs> uh, so the father is for the busu in the house. <laughs> and the mother is for the January in the house. Uh, really? um, they have to call everybody to prayer. Okay. So usually I recommend you that in homes you build an altar. Okay. Build an altar, find a place in the house, build a small altar, have the crucifix of course okay. there, give your Bible on there, you have a little holy you altar. Be there, there. Especially in these times. Yes, in these times. times because this will need the altar. Then in your home it is like you have created your own war room. Uh, like you watched in that movie. Or uh, in your home you have created your own chapel in the home. Mm -hmm. So you leave, so to say, your comfort of watching TV and all of that. When it is time to pray, you all gather around the altar. It gives a certain atmosphere mm -hmm. that is maybe different from what you may be doing in the other parts of the, of the house. Mm -hmm. And I found something interesting from okay. the... We can share with all of us. Yes, the USCCB. Okay. Uh, United States Catholic Conference of Bishops okay. and they had something to write about tools for building a domestic church okay. maybe I'll just run through them it says number one begin praying as a family and reading from the scripture daily certainly before meals but also okay. first thing in the morning or before bed okay. find a time that works for your family use the liturgy of the church as a model for prayer and try to include heartfelt instructions instru unstructured, heartfelt, unstructured prayer as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Father, um, what you know some of us, including up in Zogos and <laughs> in communities where when it's time for eating, everybody, you know, takes his food mm -hmm. and goes to eat. Mm -hmm. and will you recommend this to, to those Catholic families? You mm -hmm. know, I, I love that they added that whatever time is convenient for the family. So what they are giving are all these suggestions. Mm -hmm. and they said also that you could do it the first thing in the morning and the last thing before you go to sleep. And if you ask me, if you have an altar in the house, the moment you wake up, you all go there. Everybody? Yes, everybody. No exception. Mm -hmm. Even if it is the toddler who can't The father speak. should not give an excuse. No, no, no. no. In should... fact, the father is the one who should be pulling everybody because the father is the priest of the home, yeah. the parish priest. Yeah. In that parish. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you call everybody to 
that place and you do your prayer. And when you are from there, you can go and bath, take your bath, everything, and come and sit and, 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 and maybe eat. But you know that we used to do this in the seminary. Sure. That not before we eat, but because when we are about to eat, people are hungry. They yeah. don't care about what you are saying. <laughs> so when we had finished eating and everybody had come to that, and then the reading yes. was made just before the announcement, yes. especially during Lent. Mm, yes. We wanted to hear the readings for the next day. Yeah. So when everybody had eaten and everybody was composed, wow. and people's minds were now here. Okay. So they would listen to the word of God. And they would listen to the word of God. Then someone took the reading for the next day, or for yeah. the current day. In our case, it was the next day. Yeah. And, and read to the whole dining hall. And the place was quiet. It was one of the times when he could really do some good reflection. Eh? This was quiet when he was reading, and when he was done reading, there was a little silence before we said a grace and we left. So at least we went about that day, that night, going to sleep, knowing the readings for the next day. And that would be the plan that the family can have for maybe evening prayer. So in the morning, they could go over that same reading again and do a little Bible sharing, if possible. Yeah. So we wake up in the morning, we go to the altar, the priest of the house, yeah, the parish, priest, of parish the house. priest of the house, yeah. calls one of us to read the reading for the day, yeah. and then reads it, we share, we do a little sharing, because by what we are saying, we should have read it maybe the previous night. Mm -hmm. So if we have read it the previous night, then this one is just to refresh us. So mm -hmm. uh, we read it, we do a little Bible sharing. We pray, when we are done praying, maybe we go bath, we go eat and all of that. In the evening when we gather again, we are about to pray, but we can read the readings for the next day already. So we don't do Bible sharing. We just do the, maybe the readings for the next day so that people can reflect on it while they go to sleep. Then in the next one, we repeat that reading because it was for the next day. When we repeat it, now people have done their reflection already. Then we do a Bible sharing and then we can continue. So it can be a morning and evening thing. Morning and evening thing. I think that will help. Well, viewers, if you just join us, uh, this is from Corpus Christi Catholic Church. Here we are with Father Hilary, the priest in charge of St. Bakita Catholic Church. And we are talking about empowering the domestic church. And the domestic church has to do with the family back home. The family back home. So the domestic church, that's what we are looking at. You know, um, what Father is saying, I mean, if we should put it into practice, it's something which is going to help us a lot to build our families. You know, you can imagine waking up, you know, gathering together as a family and reading the Bible together and doing everything together and all that. I mean, it's something which is going to be of so much importance and to build that home. But uh, I have a question already. Oh, there's a question. Well, uh, we have a question from one of our uh, viewers. What is the procedure to creating a home altar and what are the rules governing this altar? Well, you know that the altar is a sacred place and it is reserved. Uh, somebody says it is set apart. I mean, just like you won't come to Corpus Christi Parish, yeah. enter the place, we say we want to do some agape feast, we cannot find a table anywhere, we say, oh, there's an altar there, mm -hmm. and then uh, we just mm -hmm. go and remove the cloth from it, and we set the bamboo and uku and all that. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Yeah. It is set apart for a particular purpose. So in your home, you could identify a place where you don't just pass by hand, mm -hmm. a place where people don't just go, they have to intentionally go, mm -hmm. people don't just pass by hand. And you set, set apart. Yes, the place should be set apart. Mm -hmm. And then you can get a very small table. Some people have made it something that is fixed in the wall. Mm -hmm. Others have made it a table. Mm -hmm. uh, but that table, again, is now going to be set apart. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. So you don't use the table there, and then once in a while when you get a visitor, you want to put something in and take the table, mm -hmm. clear everything and send it. So that table may have to be also set apart. So the table is put in that corner. You can get uh, a cloth, a simple white cloth just like we do for our altars. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, you can put a crucifix or something of that sort on it. Now, what is usually important is that you get a priest, if possible, to bless yes, your altar. parish priest. Yes, your, so parish, see your priest. parish priest. Your parish priest yes. will do you a, a lot of good. Your parish priest comes to, to bless, the, or so to say, consecrate the altar for mm -hmm. you. 
not <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. so yeah. that's the altar for you yeah. and then you can use it yeah. that is simply how you go. I mean it doesn't take too much mm. to make the, the altar in your in your home the only thing you must safeguard is that you don't get people uh, going there, people picking anything from there, using anyhow, mm -hmm. or using the place for too many things. I mean, the place is so, should be so set apart mm -hmm. that when you go there, you know that you have entered your chapel. Yes, mm -hmm. it's important. Uh, basically, this is what I can say about, about it. So, about I think the one who has asked the question, I'm sure Father has answered your question. Looking for the procedure, you see your parish priest, and your parish priest will lead you. Mm -hmm. When you see your parish priest, mm -hmm. they, will, they will direct you and guide you as to how to go about it. And then also, once you set an altar, keep the sanctity. Mm -hmm. Keep the holiness of the place because that is where you meet God. It is a place you meet God. Mm -hmm. And so as much as possible, make that place a beautiful and a very sanctimonious place. And that's what Father is saying. Uh, just, just to yes. add, um, so this is not just for these times. Yes. This is supposed to be what is done always. So you don't do it for these times and then just dismantle it when uh, the corona times are passed. No. <laughs> so it should be something that you keep. It should be something that should be there already. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Maybe this whole virus thing is functional for us. Yeah. It is calling us to personal spirituality, but also calling us to family spirituality. But I think we have another question. Hey. Thank you. Unfortunately, my, my this is not working, so I have to get to the person from outside. But another person has just come in. He said, so in these times of social distancing, mm -hmm. what can be done to bless the authors from the parish? I mean, I mean, I mean how can we get the parish to bless the authors? You know, God, God, I, I keep saying, uh, God is not mechanical. Yes, yes. Uh, that's God true. is not mechanical. It's not like procedure, procedure, procedure. So at this time, you cannot get Father to come around. You know, yeah. The truth is that we really wish we could come around. Yeah. I don't like you. We yeah. had a discussion around That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. And people were really clamoring for us to come around, give you communion at your homes, come around, meet you at home, and, and have programs with you if it is not possible to bring us together. But the fear is that we could be agents of passing it around. Yes. I mean, we meet people still once in a while. So uh, we could have it on unknowingly. We could bring it and then pass it around to all of you. And that is where our fear is. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that we don't become careers who we'll pass it on to all of you. That's right. So for me, again, I mean, you can reach your parish piece on phone, but I doubt he can come to your home at this moment because he doesn't want to put you in danger. You can, as a family, pray and bless the altar together. And then after all of this is done, you can call the priest to come and, and, and bless the altar for you. Take it for instance that our churches, they just uh, we just dedicated Saint Makita Kalia yes. Church. We were celebrating on the altar all this one. Yes. But it was not consecrated by the bishop. Mm -hmm. The priest himself had done some blessing. Yes. And we were celebrating on the altar until it was possible for the bishop to come round mm -hmm. and to bless the altar. So you have to make the altar now. Yes. Don't say because Father cannot come now, I cannot make the altar. Make the altar. And then when it is possible for Father to come round, then your parish priest will come round and then do the blessing for you. But how it will be nice that every Catholic home didn't only have a crucifix maybe at the door or inside yeah. somewhere like in the room, place. but an altar, mm -hmm. a place where the family gathers to pray. Yeah. Uh, I think it will be very good for us. Yeah. That is very, that very uh, important for us to note. So we are living in times of faith now, mm -hmm. and our faith must lead us to move as Christians. Mm -hmm. Yet the priests are not there for good reasons. Like Father explained, we don't want to be agent of spreading this virus. We meet people one, one or two here and there, we don't know whether we are carrying it or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. So we are quarantining ourselves. We don't want to bring it in case we have it to your homes. Mm. So we are praying for you. Pray with us as well. Our faith must be lighted up wherever we are. So that brighten the corner wherever you are. We brighten our own with our small, small lights which are brightening the whole world. Father, you know, the issue of the domestic um, family, the domestic church, you know, I think it works well, even though sometimes they know that some challenges when we have Catholic couples or in the Catholic homes. But I know that the challenge comes when we have mixed marriages. Mm -hmm. The father is a Catholic, the wife is not a Catholic. Mm -hmm. The wife is a Catholic, mm -hmm. the, the husband is not a Catholic. Mm -hmm. We have big challenge. We have mm -hmm. even situations where 
No, even two Catholics may get married. The husband stops the wife from going to church. Mm. Don't go to bar parties, don't go anywhere, stay at home. God has married you. Mm. 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 Father, what do you think say about it, especially with the mixed marriages? Well, I well, unfortunately I can't stop somebody from marrying. Not at all. But no advice can we is not a Catholic. Yes. Uh, I've had friends who say before I marry, I want to be sure that this person is Catholic or not. Yes. And uh, I think that is uh, in their right to do. Uh, however, we know also that some marry and they marry Catholics, and before you realize one has stopped the Catholic Church at that point somewhere, yeah. it can also become a problem. But I think it should not stop us from praying together. Yeah. Whether you are Catholic or not, whichever church you belong to, we should pray together. We should pray together. Prayer is something that unites us all as a as a, what do we call it as, as Christians so uh, the problem may come up when one is a Muslim mm -hmm. that is a, a disparity of course oh, one is a Muslim oh, one is a, a Christian a Catholic, Catholic yeah. or one is a Shintoist or a Buddhist mm -hmm. yeah. one it's is a Taoist and, yeah. and then it becomes a problem that is a bit dicey even there the one who is the Christian person has a right to the space in the family just like the other one who is not and I think that with a good cordial discussion, the person accepted you though you are a Christian yes. and has accepted that you go to a Christian church or a Catholic church. It should, it should be possible for the person to accept that you are free mm -hmm. at home. So don't, don't give the excuse that my husband is not Christian or that my husband is not Catholic mm -hmm. or that my wife is not Christian or that my wife is not Catholic. Mm -hmm. Begin something. At least have a discussion about it and see how you can end up somewhere. You never know. In this time, yeah. you could be drawing the other person closer to the Christian faith or to the Catholic faith even more. Mm. It's, it's, it should be possible, but it's, you know, in some homes, it's very difficult. Right very difficult. We, we just bear very with them. Some uh, people cannot pray rosary at home, like you said, because they have couple who are of you no know, from a different faith altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even in those cases, like I keep saying, today we are building not only the domestic church. But individual spirituality okay. too. So if you cannot bring the whole family together to pray, so you alone you know, can yeah. also pray. Uh, so you yeah. have a discussion with your husband. He says, no, no, don't do anything like that in my house. That's fine. But I'm not sure husband will stop you from doing your prayer. Okay. And and I still think that we can all build our spiritualities around this type too. Father, in building again the domestic church, you know something about talking about spirituality. Mm -hmm. You know we have. Uh, different spiritualities. You know, some people say I'm a Maria Switch, uh, I'm a Maria devotee, mm -hmm. I'm a charismatic, even the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a devotee of the uh, Divine Mercy, Sacred Heart, and all that. So sometimes you'll be surprised. Even at home, we have the father uh, is, a, is a charismatic, the mother is a Maria devotee, the religion of yes. Mary. And so, you know. <laughs> One of the reasons why I love the Catholic Church is that we are like a salad bowl. <laughs> we have carrots yeah, in there, we have lettuce yeah, in there, in there. Sure. we have everything in there. That makes us unique. And it makes it very nice. Anyway, so if you are not I, I, see you, I see you eating salad and I see you eating salad. <laughs> no, I like salad. You know? <laughs> but, yeah. so, so, I mean, if you are Catholic, if you ask me, you are lucky, you are blessed. Yeah. Because we have a salad bowl situation, yeah. sort of. So we don't reject any of these spiritualities that we have accepted as a church. So we can use all of them. Why not? Today we all gather and we are praying the rosary. Tomorrow we gather and then we are doing spontaneous prayer. Yes. Why not? Now, the one who is into Marian devotion may lead the Marian devotion. Mm -hmm. The one who is a charismatic renewal person will decide that, okay, if it is this day that I, oh, I will lead it. And then at the point now, you can shift the rules. And you pick the spiritualities up. You cannot imagine how much you can pick up around this time. Mm, yeah. So um, I think that also doesn't stop us at all. Um, let's yeah. mix it yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, how many in the church would do and that? Who yes, like we do the church. Can. Yes. It's a, bigger church we look, salad is nice, though. <laughs> yeah, he will tell you <laughs> when you have the lettuce, the cabbage, the carrot, everything put together. And you are trying to eat It's good. Salad is yeah, good. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, so I, th I think that should not be an excuse. We can still do, okay. do it, and we can, we can blend the spiritualities. Sure. I mean, if you go through this thing that I want to say that, mm -hmm. for instance, it says at the end of that first point, it says, uh, 
and try to include heartfelt, unstructured prayer as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Prayer that is heartfelt, but mm -hmm. not structured. Not structured. But, but the second point immediately says, pray a family rosary. Each member leads a decade and everyone shares intentions. That's so, structured. That's structured. So okay. he's giving you that. There are Any option. variations. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can always switch to one or the other. Once we are praying, and once it is we lifting our hearts to God and having a connection with God, mm -hmm. that is beautiful. That is beautiful. It's a, it's a great experience to have here. Okay. Mm. Okay. I, I mean, when you go on, he says, have a crucifix in a prominent place in the home. Every Catholic must have that. Yes. I want you to look at the camera and tell them. Uh, tell every, them. Every Catholic must have that. No, like what I said, like what I said, every Catholic must have a crucifix. Now, a crucifix is uh, the the image, you know, the cross with the image of Jesus on it. Every Catholic, every Catholic must have one in your home, in in your office, mm. that identifies you as a Catholic. Mm. Father, continue. Yes, I mean, some people say they love the one that. When, when it is dark, it when just, the light goes off, yes, it reflects. Yeah. Yeah. That is nice. Why not? But mm -hmm. every Catholic, one, one priest was complaining that he entered somebody's home and there were pictures of some pastors, and he was wondering whether it was a Catholic home he had ended yeah. because he could not find a crucifix anywhere. He could find some pastors with wise men. So that is why when the children grow up, they find the problem staying in the Catholic church. So the domestic church is not strong enough. The domestic church has its minds two, two, three, three, four, four. Mm. There's a problem. Yes. Uh, yeah. But in a Catholic home, when you enter somewhere, there must be Something the crucifix. Must, must be there must, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's important. It says have a crucifix in a prominent place in the home, and in every bedroom if possible. Uh, then it says make the sacraments a regular celebration. Take the whole family to confession and mass. So all of these. He is talking about not only in the corona times. So he's thinking that as on a usual, he will do that. I used to see a family when I was in Comte 8, because that is my parish, St. Jesus of the Weka. There was this Ivorian man who worked in Ghana. I don't want to mention the name, or, but I loved something about the man. Saturday evenings, mm -hmm. he drives the whole family to church. What? Confession. He drives the whole family. To church for confession and they all come to church and they have confession with father all of them finish and then they drive and go back home so that is something else that the domestic church can do i know there is one man i know from uh, saint Teresa's parish who also done at the end of the year he brings all of his family extended family the children with their wives and their children and everybody comes to one particular priest i remember I don't want to, I'm not sure it is okay to mention his name. And that priest will call, he also doesn't do it alone, he'll call one of the other priests. I was privileged one day to go. And I was asking, what is this about? He says, this man does this ritual every year. So it's part of their domestic, domestic church program that every year, at the end of the year, we pack all of us, whether you have been going for confession or not, we go to the parish, we see the priest, and then. So in that case, it makes fathers work easy. Very easy. You sit at the confession yes. and mosquitoes are coming from the <laughs> And the human beings are not coming. Father, there's a, there's a question here yes. for one of our viewers. It says, can a non-Catholic come and pray at your altar? If you have a Catholic, you set up your altar. Can a non-Catholic Oh, yeah, they can. Okay. They can. I mean, person has come to pray. Even in our churches, non-Catholics yes, come to I, pray. Yes, okay. I've said it a number of times that at Prince of Peace, I used to see two yeah. family members. Yeah. Eh, from churches close by Prince of Peace at Kwashiman, who come there to pray. Mm -hmm. And they come. First, first time I saw it, I was shocked. I mean, I was asking myself, this young lady, does she know what she's doing? Mm -hmm. She's kneeling before. They both come, they kneel before the blessed sacraments they are praying. I was asking myself, where are my Catholics? Mm -hmm. yeah. and they have a sister in the church, but the two of them, one is uh, in one church mm -hmm. and one is in another. I don't want to mention mm -hmm. the names of the churches. But those two are in two different churches. One day I saw the elder sister bring another friend. friend come and when they came and they were there for a bit, she called me, the father, my friend wants to see you. I went yeah. there, I didn't know the person. We are open yeah. to guide people. It doesn't matter whether you are Catholic or you are not Catholic. So if you have made your altar at home, why not? Mm -hmm. You're not Catholic friend, come, come and pray at your altar. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean that it happened here before. We had one non-Catholic who come all the way from 
you know, the skin test was down there mm. to come here for mass mm. uh, to for to go to mm. to pray. Oh, some do that. Yes, we see them. No, she tells you that you know. Uh, she prayed at the Goto and then something mm. happened and since then mm. she will always come to Goto before she goes to work every morning. Yeah. Every morning. I have a, 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 I knew a woman who donated her school to the church. Mm. The woman I thought was Catholic. Her school's name was very Catholic. Mm. Uh, somewhere around Antiku mm. uh, in Santa Maria area. Uh, what is the name of the school? But it was very Marian mm. with the name. It was very Marian. I went there, she invited me to come and have mass in her school. Yeah, okay. I was so excited. Mm -hmm. When I went there, there was a huge Marian statue in the school. So I asked, is the proprietor a Catholic? Mm -hmm. She said, no, she is not. They mentioned the church she goes to. But when she was having a conversation with me, you saw that she had had an, a, a, a certain encounter mm -hmm. with uh, Mary mm -hmm. in her Marian devotion. Mm -hmm. And so, even though she's not Catholic, her Marian devotion, if you ask me, may be stronger than most Catholics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. it doesn't matter, your friend who is not Catholic, can still pray at your, your altar. These things are all just to strengthen our faith, even as Catholics, to know that we really, really have uh, enough riches. We are worth, I mean, so much. We have this worth in our church. Let us explore them, especially in these times. And even beyond, when we are out of this crisis, explore the riches in the church. Um, Father, mm. um, what will you talk about catechesis in the domestic church? But the problem there is, <laughs> I see. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> you cannot give what you don't have. Exactly. Then mm, that called not have it. No, you, you, you can imagine the small boy in the house ask the father, why does father do this? Why does oh, we when we go to church, <laughs> then ask father. <laughs> so it happens. It happens. Uh, you know, even the Passover. Yes. Whenever they celebrated the Passover. The young one in the house was supposed to ask the elderly yes. one in the house, what is this exactly. about? And then they yeah, would they tell, tell the story. story. But yeah, it is. But uh, daddy doesn't know. <laughs> Mommy daddy doesn't know. <laughs> child is asking. So who teaches the child? Yeah. The catechism. Uh -huh. So it's important that mommy and daddy learn and know the faith. Only then can they pass it on because otherwise it's a problem. You know, when we are baptizing a child, we we'll say we are hanging on to the faith of the adult yes. or the parents to baptize the child. What about if there is no faith? Mm -hmm. uh, they don't know what they are talking about. They don't know what they are doing. They don't know what to. That's why it's important when we are teaching in church, mm -hmm. parents should make the time to come. Channels like this are important for everybody. You will learn one or the other thing. Your child will ask you a question you can answer. If you can ask them, answer most of them. And then once in a while, everybody needs yes, to confirm. Yes. Even us, once in yes. a while, you ask a question, mm -hmm. and this one we think, okay, I may have to search more. Okay. And then you can search and say, okay, we can ask father. That's fine. But you, every time your child is asking, <laughs> we have to <laughs> ask father. <laughs> then there's a problem. So when we want to establish a domestic church, it means that our parents must build up their faith. They must be ready. Should be part of their responsibility. And they should teach it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I think that sometimes the advice I give to parents is that at least I know that once you are a Catholic, you know, you definitely know something about the church. Begin from that point. Mm, mm, mm. At least begin to see the child what you know. Mm, mm. It gives the child the confidence that my mother, no, my sorry. father knows something about the church. Mm. And we don't do the things we do. Exactly. For sake. Definitely the you have some understanding. Yeah, you definitely have some you know something about the church. Mm. There's something you believe about the, about the church. Begin teaching the child that with your with confidence, and the child will, will take it up, you know. Yeah, and you can learn a lot these days. There's there's something everywhere, mm -hmm. but you have to be careful what you are reading anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can find out which sites can you go to. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have been following Father Jay's um, YouTube page for a while. Why why why, why are you laughing? Anyway, yeah, I've told him this many times, <laughs> and and I admire him greatly. I tell him the consistency with which he does this. Some of us, we can't do it. Uh, it's not about doing it alone. It's about the consistency with which you do it. And it, those of us who cannot do it or are not able to do it must help those who are able to do it. And while we encourage them, I'll say these are resources. You are sure that if you're coming to listen to his, it's authentic. I see him hold the Catechism of the Catholic Church and he's teaching what he's teaching from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. There are many sites you can go to if you don't know which side to go to, you can yeah, ask your priest. Is there. Yeah, there is yeah. a Scott Han is yes. there. There is a Fruity Sheen is there. There are many. These are all online. Uh, they are all online. You can see videos. You can see 
materials you can read and all of that. If you still do not understand, you can always uh, refer to your priest and then your priest can give you maybe a better understanding. But we have to learn. We have to learn. You will learn and you will know. Uh, so I propose that good, you start from where you, you what have what you have known mm. already. But you can't stay at that level mm. all the time. No, so you no, have no, to grow. No. Yes. So it will take some learning. Mm. And it just takes you to do a little bit of five minutes, ten minutes listening to some audio or video mm. or picking something to read and you build your faith in one yeah. way or the other. Somebody was asking me not too long ago, the person is no more she says, no, she says, I'm Catholic at heart. <laughs> She's gone away with her husband to another church. Yeah. So she was asking me, Father, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, but the time has passed because of this time with your parishioners thing is passed. Yeah. What's the question? She says, okay, what about those who want to have confessions around this time? Because they have heard that hey, the end times are coming. You know? <laughs> so I asked, ah, Auntie, I thought you were not Catholic anymore. <laughs> I says, oh, even my husband knows that I am Catholic at heart. <laughs> Nobody can take that away from me. Exactly. And I say, okay, that's beautiful. Anyway, the Pope has said something yes. about perfect contrition. Yes, perfect contrition. So I sent the video to her. Mm. She asked me, Father, can I post it? I yes. said, oh, Father, feel free yes. and post it. Yes. So she has posted it on her, on her status. My point is, anyway, Father, for the sake of our viewers who are listening and they not, have not watched that video about perfect contrition, ah. give me a summary of it. <laughs> So perfect contrition is simply, mostly all the processes you go through before you have your individual confession. But only that you are not able to go for individual confession. So you sit down, you pray, you ask the Holy Spirit to, to help you to remember your sins. You remember then you accept your fault. You, you, you make a resolution not to go back to them again. You pray for the help of God's grace not to go back to them again. And you pray for forgiveness. And the only step you are not able to take is to go for confession directly with the priest. Uh -huh. And at that point, when you pray for forgiveness, so the Pope says, talk to God. I like that aspect. He, he says, talk, talk to tell God. Jesus, I have done this, yes, I have done this, I have God. done this. Just tell him. I like that aspect. This is what I have done. So yes. it's like you are doing your confession, you are doing directly yes. to him, yes. talk to him. Yes. Now, but the little thing about perfect contrition is that it makes a resolution that the next available flight, yes. if you ask me, they yes. will take it. Yes. So the next opportunity you have a priest yes. around, yes. Yes. you will go for confession. So yes. this is good, especially also for those who are at areas where they see the priest once every three months, mm -hmm. but the catechist is giving communion service. Yes. Catechist cannot listen to your confession. So what you do is you do perfect contrition. You go for communion. The moment you see a priest, you go to a priest and say, Father, I want to have confession. And then you, you pour it all out. Thank you very much, Father Hilary. It has been a well-spent time, very educative, and we had some fun as well. I'm sure we have learned a lot, and I can see many are still asking questions. Um, we just said 30 minutes, but I'm sure we just gone a little beyond 30 minutes. Mm. Father has been very resourceful, and uh, now he's here with me, so I'm tapping a lot from him before he, anything happens. <laughs> so I am here with Father Hilary. And, it's, it's, it's good. It's just good to be with such a person to tap a lot from him. So we'll come your way again. We're hoping to sustain this throughout the lengthy period and especially this time when we are asked to quarantine ourselves. Yes, we are quarantining ourselves here as well, keeping the social distance and keeping all the other rules this as is, well. This is less than two meters. <laughs> yeah, but I think that is one meter or two meters. I don't know if I have gone to the world there, but I think we are trying to keep yeah, some yeah, distance yeah, yeah. here. So please, let us take it very seriously. Take it very, very seriously because it is not a thing to joke with at all. Mm. Be your brother's keeper. Mm. And if when your brother forgets, remind him. Because when he falls sick, it's going to be your responsibility to me take care of him or her. So let us remind ourselves, let us do the right thing. Everybody should try and do the right thing. At least prevention, they say, is better than cure. Don't even say, well, there's going to be a vaccine, so let me get it and then I'll get No, prevention is better than cure. Let us keep ourselves, let us keep the safety precautions. I want to tell our parishioners, please, on Sundays, Stay at home and, and join the mass online. Nobody should come to the church. Don't come to the compound because we are not having mass in the church. We are not having mass. The mass will be, will be online. Will be online. So please tell your friends, especially our mothers and fathers who are not uh, social media friendly. 
let us help them let us put on the smart TVs and and show this online on the televisions at home let us all join so please nobody should come to the compound on Sunday to to have mass nobody let us all be at home and join the mass and we'll all pray together God is going to listen to our prayer thank you very much and uh, I see you many questions coming in on the page um, is it Fashioners can send their questions oh, under the video online or on various WhatsApp groups. Okay. So if you still have questions or things you want us to discuss on this platform, we are planning to have this on Mondays and Fridays. Okay, Mondays and Fridays we have a case so that Thursday we'll spend time in adoration. The blessed sacrament, the rosary, we have proper adoration. We can have time to pray. We pray the rosary, we have time to pray the charismatic way right from here to your homes so that we will not lose touch with God at all. We don't want to rust in these few weeks. We don't want to rust at all. So keep the fire burning wherever you are. Keep praying. Pray without season. Pray without season. If you want to get in touch with us, you have a phone. WhatsApp us, ask questions, and get in touch. Okay? You don't need to come to the parish unless it is very, 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 very important else we may, we may infect you don't know yeah. <laughs> and we that's don't what we are that. afraid of exactly um, so thank you very much parishioners we are grateful to you god bless you thank you for your support thank you out there for even supporting the church from wherever you are god keep you and god continue to bless you this too shall pass in jesus name amen it shall pass amen father amen I'll be happy if you can give us the final blessing. You can give us the blessing. The Thank Lord you. be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a good night rest. We'll see you tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. for morning mass online. 6.30 a.m. Join us online for mass. Please, parishioners, don't come around. We are begging you. <laughs> Join us online. We shall receive speaker from you. God bless you. Good night. Bye-bye.